it for Robert Lynch! There we go, keep it going. How's it going? Yeah. Uh, so like all of you, I spend most of my waking hours strategizing about how to survive those first few days of prison. Uh, now my strategy is, on that very first day, to find the biggest, baddest, toughest motherfucker in there, march right up to him in the yard, and just start sucking his dick. <laughs> and ladies, you know what I'm talking about, right? I've always figured that voluntary dick sucking is superior to involuntary ass raping. Uh, now I know you're thinking, what a genius this guy is. This guy is fucking foolproof. What could possibly go wrong, right? And I tend to agree with you, but I have noticed one problem. What if this guy doesn't want me to suck his dick? Then you kind of get in this awkward wrestling match, you know, where you're kind of fighting him, and, but I'll tell you what, if I could pull it off, I'd get some respect in that person. <laughs> so I was at the bar a few weeks ago, and uh, a friend of mine said, uh, oh, I swear, I'm sorry, I said, I gotta go take a piss. And she said, TMI. Anyone ever heard of this expression, TMI? Well, unfortunately, I now know this means too much information. I don't understand how me telling someone I have to take a piss is too much information. Uh, now, if I had said, excuse me, Katie, but I have to go to the bathroom to wash all the blood off my cock from that torso I've been toting around in my trunk for the past two weeks, that's too much information. You know what's definitely too much information? The 45 minutes before I told her I had to take a piss, where she detailed the flower arrangements on her second engagement party for a fucking hour. Right, that was too much information. So, uh, so, you know what I find really sexy? Pussy. Uh, so I teach anthropology uh, at a nearby college. Uh, the university requires us to have office hours. So I have a couple of couple hours every week, and I try to hold them as late as possible at night to avoid contact with students as much as possible. <laughs> but sometimes they still come. And uh, so a couple weeks ago, it was like 10 o'clock at night, and no one's in the building, no one's in the office. I'm sitting there, and this girl comes in, and she's failing the class. And uh, she's a cheerleader. She travels with the basketball team. And she's basically begging me. She's saying, you know, Professor Lynch, is there anything, anything I can do? to pass this class. You know, I'm no mathematician, but I can put two and two together. So I say, hey, uh, yeah, sure, Tracy, what do you have in mind? So she slides her chair over next to mine and goes, well, Professor Lynch, I was thinking I could do a feminist critique of post-carbon uh, post dating techniques. So I failed her. <laughs> so you guys all hear about these uh, subway cars, they're dropping off the coast of the Atlantic Ocean, and they're making these coral reefs out of them? It's the old Redbird line from the four, five, and six trains. Apparently it's working out really well, and in the last decade, you know, just the last decade, biomass in those areas increased like 400 fold, you know, cal calcium carbonate levels are at all time highs, it's just working out great. There's only a couple problems. And one is that in comparison to the neighboring reefs, the stabbing rates are like 300% higher in these areas. And they're not sure if it's the clownfish gangs or the flounder possums that are the responsible for the increase in violence. The other thing is some of the neighboring reefs have been complaining about the smell of piss and garbage from these areas. Uh, so, all right, so I have a son who I share custody with. He just turned 11 years old. And a few months ago, I was out to dinner with him and his, uh, the topic of the custody battle came up with his mom, which happened nine years ago. And it occurred to me that I'd never had that big conversation with him, you know, the conversation about the custody battle. When, he was, when it happened, he was too young, he was two and a half years old, and it had just never come up then. So he's like, you know, why do I live with my mom? I don't live with you. And I realized this is delicate. I've got to proceed with caution here. I've got to be very careful. You know, we both love him. I want to make this, you know. So I said, yeah, Nicholas, yeah, you're right. The reason I don't live with your mom anymore is because she's a fucking bitch. <laughs> but then 
then I realized, who am I kidding? The, he, you live with the bitch. You know this. Preach it to the choir. So I said, Nick, you know, basically, I had a choice about nine years ago whether to continue to live with your mom or I could move out. And if I continued to live with her, the police would have come for the eighth time in the same week. And I would have ended up having to spend the rest of my life strategizing about how to avoid sucking cock. <laughs> Thank you. Robert Lynch! Robert Lynch! <laughs>